Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm going to explain every grip in tennis and which grip you should use for each stroke. Please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Even share this video with a friend, as those are the best ways to support this channel. So excited to make this video for you today, and I'm just going to talk to you about how to hold the racket. Right, There are different grips for different shots, so I want to first explain to you the hand, and you'll see these spots in my hand right now. I'm going to explain these spots, I'm going to explain the bevels on the racket, and then I'll go over each grip. So let's first talk about your hand. So on each hand, you have two spots to know about. The base knuckle of your index finger and the heel pad. Those two spots need to go on a very specific bevel, which we'll talk about in a second. If you are a one-handed backhand, you only need to worry about the spots on your dominant hand. But if you are a two-handed backhand, you need to know about both hands, since you'll be using both hands on the backhand. We're going to be putting these spots on a very specific bevel. So let's next talk about the bevels, and then we'll go over each grip. Now, when looking at the butt of your racket to know where to put those spots on your hand, it's important that you get the racket orientation correct. You'll notice that I've got a Wilson racket here. And you know when you spin your racket before a match and you ask M or W? Well, that's because you're planning on the racket laying flat when it hits the ground. Well, here you can see my racket is on its edge, and that's the appropriate orientation to start counting and understanding the bevels. Now, the handle on the racket is an octagon, and you'll see that here, eight sides. Each side is called a bevel, and we're going to be putting those two spots on each hand, if you're a two-hander, it's each hand, on one of those bevels. But let's first understand the numbers. Bevel number one is on the very top. That's bevel one, and it doesn't matter if you're right-handed or left-handed. If you're right-handed, you count to the right. If you're left-handed, you count to the left. So as a right-hander, this is bevel two, bevel three, bevel four is here, and so on. As a lefty, bevel one again is on top. Bevel two, be let me redo that one so it's right in the middle. There you go. Bevel two, bevel three, bevel four, and so on. And, and, and for context, as a lefty, this is bevel eight, right? It goes all the way around. That is how you count the bevels on the racket. All right, let's talk about the way to hold the racket correctly for each stroke. So I've gone ahead and put the spots on my hands, and I even put a brand new grip on my racket to make this video, and it feels amazing. I should have put a grip, a new grip on weeks ago. Uh, make sure you're putting new grips on your racket. You'll feel a lot more control over the racket at contact. It won't slip in your hand. It feels great. Um, so let's talk about each grip that you're going to use for your strokes. So let's talk about the forehand. So on the forehand, I'm going to count as a righty here. As a forehand, you're going to count from bevels. Remember, bevel one is on top then two, we're going to be using either bevel three, four, or five for the forehand. And so bevel number three is the eastern forehand grip, and that's what Roger Federer uses. Bevel number four, the slanted 45 degree angle bevel, each bevel is 45 degrees different than the previous bevel. 45 times eight is 360. So this is bevel number four. Think of uh, Novak Djokovic hitting a forehand. And then the very bottom bevel is bevel number five, and that's the full western, think jack sock. And so all you do to hold any of those grips is just take these two spots, and if you want the Federer grip, put it on bevel three, which is the very side, that's bevel three. So my two spots, you can see when I hold, when I open up my hand, you can't see the spots, because they're both on the racket. You don't want to hold like this, exposing the heel pad. So you want the heel pad and the knuckle on the same bevel for the forehand, and bevel number three is the eastern forehand grip. And then here is the semi-western. So that's the Novak Djokovic grip. By the way, when Federer and Djokovic hit forehands, their hand position is different, more than the racket. So let me explain that. So when Federer hits a forehand, his palm is facing where he wants the ball to go. When Novak hits a forehand, remember each bevel is 45 degrees different, Novak has his hand open at 45 degrees. When Jack Sock hits a forehand, his hand is on the very bottom. So he takes those two spots and he puts them on the very bottom of the racket. Again, get the racket's orientation like this. The very bottom of the racket. That is a full Western grip. So when Federer hits a forehand, his palm looks like this. 
when Djokovic hits a forehand, his palm looks like this. And when uh, Jack Sock hits a forehand, his palm looks like this, when the racket is in the same position. What you're really changing is the hand position, and you are changing the contact point, because the more western your grip, the more the contact point is out in front, and also it helps to be a little higher. That's why low balls are tough for people with a full western grip. But that's a nice just sidebar there to just understand the difference that the hand position is different at contact. Let's talk about the one-handed backhand. What's cool about the one-handed backhand is that it's a one-handed backhand, so you use bevel number one. And there are variations, and you'll see pros sometimes a little shy of number one or a little past number one. But let me just give you the basic grip for a one-handed backhand. You're gonna take these two spots, and it doesn't matter if you're left-handed or right-handed, this works for you. This is bevel number one, and you're gonna take those two spots and place them on the very top. So we're talking about where the hand is facing at contact. With a backhand, your palm is facing down when the racket is on its edge. Your palm is facing down. That is a one-handed backhand grip. Again, there are variations. You'll see uh, uh, Justine and Ardan used to have her grip a little farther. When players hit with, on clay, when they play on clay, they tend to turn a little farther, which helps them deal with higher balls. Um, and you'll see like Vavrinka, uh, he's a little shy of that. So I can just say that you're going to have to work on it and, and experiment, but just start with that where your hand is on the very top in bevel number one. When it comes to the two-hander, it's going to get a little complicated, but I'll see how well I can explain this. So as a two-hander, you have to use two grips. And so if you are right-handed, I would recommend your right hand being on bevel number two, which is the continental grip. That's this 45 degree slanted bevel. And then with your top hand, your left hand, as a right-hander, put it on either bevel seven or bevel six. If it's on bevel seven, that's the equivalent of the eastern forehand grip for you right-handers with your left hand. So you'll hit a little flatter, think Del Potro. And then the left hand, for a right-hander, if it's on bevel six, remember bevel one is on top and we count all the way around, the bottom was bevel five, think of the jack sock forehand, this is bevel six. If your top hand as a right-hander, your left hand is on bevel six, those two spots are on this bevel, that's um, like the Djokovic uh, backhand grip and you're gonna get a lot of spin with that. Just reverse those if you are left-handed. When it comes to volleys, now typically what's taught is using a continental grip. I actually don't teach the continental grip on either volley, and yes, you have plenty of time to change your grip. Don't let anyone ever tell you you don't have time to change your grip. I've been changing my grip on forehand and backhand volleys my whole life. I teach every one of my students to change their grip, and they would never even think that you don't have enough time. It takes less time to change your grip than it does to turn and step. And if you're thinking about, well, what if you're poaching, or what if you're playing doubles and the opponent poaches and they slam the ball at you? Well, sure, you don't have enough time to change your grip, and then you don't, and then you're just like everyone else. Um, but I actually teach, um, let, let's start with what's taught typically. What's taught typically is the continental grip on volleys, the knuckle and the heel pad on bevel two. And what's taught is use that grip for the forehand and that grip for the backhand. I actually don't use either of those grips personally, or nor do I teach that for volleys. I actually teach slightly to the right of that, if you're right-handed, as a forehand and for a forehand volley, and slightly to the left of that for a backhand. It actually hits a much flatter volley. You can still put spin on the ball, and you have plenty of time to do that while the ball is on its way to you. Um, but I actually teach slightly to the side and I use slightly to the side of, on each one. I don't use a continental grip and it produces a much flatter volley. Try that. Uh, I think you'll notice a big difference in the volley if you're struggling using the continental grip on your volleys. So now let's talk about the serve and the overhead and it's going to be the same grip. And there are variations, of course. Berrettini has a very severe grip, Raonic very severe grip, but I'm just gonna start with the basics. And when it comes to the serve, What's ideal, if you can do it, is a continental grip, which is this slanted 45 degree angle bevel, top right, if you're right-handed. And if you're a lefty, it's this bevel right here. And it's very simple. You're gonna take those two spots and place them on the top right flat bevel. And that is called the continental grip. Obviously, grips are very personal. And if you use a grip that's in between or slightly modified or you move your heel pad a little bit here and there, I totally get it. For my second serve, I move my heel pad a little bit over. So for, I keep my knuckle on bevel two, but for my top spin serve, my kick serve, 
I'll actually move my heel pad a little bit more on top. So I take my hand from here for a first serve and I go like this, uh, not that far, but like that for a second serve. And just by moving it over slightly, I feel like it helps affect the racket face a little more so I can put more spin on the ball. But I want you to grab your racket, and I hope you were doing that throughout this video, but I want you to grab your racket and understand the bevels. Maybe even put two spots on your hand and understand the spots and how the racket should be placed in your hand. If you start holding the racket correctly, there's no doubt you're gonna gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2 You got this.